YouTuber. Hello, Barbara. This is a uh, uh, carving video about uh, this uh, mood seal. Yeah, Jin. Very artistic. Name or mood seal. <coughs> it could be a Zen Buddhist uh, Dharma name. Sounds like. Uh, so the seal we we're going to do is uh, uh, designed here. It's a seal script. <coughs> we call this small seal script. So it's a, uh, very elegant. We're going to transfer the design onto the stone. I use a uh, uh, laser jet printer to print the design onto um, paper and then we flip it. With a with a chemical called uh, acetone, it's a nail polish remover. It has to be one hundred percent pure acetone. Just a little bit. seconds it will evaporate. Okay. No, not too bad. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to carve it now. stone material is called a soap stone but it's uh, not made of soap or <laughs> anything like that it's just the appears like uh, the color maybe um, yeah it's uh, relatively soft to carve not uh, too hard to, to carve you see you can get this uh, from a website Blue Arts this is called Changhua it's the name where it's uh, mined. I kind of like this um, this print with, with this, this uh, design. There's a little bit edge there. It's like a tangent. It's you know it's better idea just break it. So um, you know this kind of thing happens in the process. It's, I call it. Uh, uh, improvising or you know happy accident, so you you just go with you have to go with the flow. If it's not artistic, break any rule, you can you have to redo it. Yeah, but as long as it add to the artistry, I'll just keep it. That's why this video is about so you can see what's going on and why is this different than the design see I, how I hold the knife with three fingers and I can kind of push it with my middle finger and then I use my ring finger to um, resist it kind of support serve as a brake so I don't push over too far 
So counterbalance. And you can turn the stone instead of turn the knife. same time kind of collaborate two hands okay oops ah I got a little bit over that's that's okay I can maybe fix that Sometimes just leave it like a could be a crack uh, on the stone, so it's all like a picture, you know, treated like a like a picture, like a painting. to fix the rhythm, you know, the, the, <coughs> the flow of the energy, it turns, you get light narrower, like a press lifting in calligraphy, because if you, yeah, it's like a curb curving the calligraphy, we call this tool the eye brush sometimes. This uh, kind of bronze radical or metal radical because it was made of uh, metal, and uh, we should kind of mimic the feel like a bronze uh, seal. So you try to hide the tip of the the stroke make it rounded all the time height the tip will make the seal look like a cast um, seal you know with bronze so we try to This is, this character has obviously lots of stroke, <laughs> so we make this narrower. We use narrower st strokes instead of thicker ones to balance. Just make all the space even. It will be nice.
the stroke is so curved up here. Even the horizontal one has a little bend. And don't be afraid to go beyond the body. Like that. Hello, Gray Conway. Thank you. Always ask, uh, you know, how deep. It's hard to say. Some deeper, some shallow, depends on the stroke size. The narrow stroke, you have to cut like a uh, uh, shallow. You can do the same for the thicker ones and the thinner ones, and the space between strokes also matter. Focus a little more so you can see.
it's kind of um, between oval and the square shape. So it has some turning point, hard turning point, not just the round. It's a very good word to describe it. Score, square or oh, 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 a square score. Yeah. something of the chi. So the chi returns in the within the frame. Not uh, Actually, it's a mirror image, so we need to see this way. Just some fine tweening to make sure that the stroke is uh, flow without a hesitation, you know, just like one stroke written with a brush. Not a uh, light narrower because the shape of the stone is squeezing. You have to make vertical this narrow.
some joint should be heavier. Not nuts. You know the stroke knees normally get uh, heavier. Like stop points. Kind of hard to hardest things to make everything look natural, you know. The, the um, human or art, um, artificial aspect is the less the better. Um, the that's just like any art, you know. Try to make it look old and. Uh, Antique. So the other corners are kind of rounded. This dots um, in the beginning and the ending of the stroke. But there's more ink. To indicate the direction of the stroke. Sometimes it varies the, the direction. Um, this one I have a heavier end and a lighter, just a sharper, a pointed tip. Just uh, vary the the shape so they don't not they're not the same like me mechanical computer font. Concentration to be careful, very careful.
Okay, I'm going to worry about the edge, outer edge, no? I just round it up, I just want to make it uh, smooth, like a moon uh, mirror. Let's see how it works. I hope not much touch, final touch needed, but it could be. But a little moisture and a temp uh, higher. Uh, temperature mo uh, moisturize and uh, and uh, um, make it uh, easier to make it smoother, less grain. Grain. Okay. Press very evenly and then lift it with the uh, left hand fingers holding the paper because it will stick it up if you don't. Okay, just leave it. Gently. Okay. I'll even up some of uh, the strokes. <coughs> I think it, uh, it's better to get a little thicker than the than the design. Maybe the noise is narrower. So we need to do some more. This stroke. Okay. So I just hold it in front. You, you, if you just cut it deeper, it will take. Uh, it will make it. Wider to sometimes. Okay. The end should be a 
smooth draw for like the one At this point, usually they will put the dust back to the stroke, so you can see that. It, um, that's a good idea to save the debris and then fill it back to the stroke. <coughs>
because the stone is hard, and you could put a rubber pad under it. We sell this on our website. Now you can use a theme uh, book or magazine. Function the same. Incidentally, I just read an article uh, of a survey um, in Shanghai. All the, the members of the seal engraving artist association, and they averaged each seal they carve would charge eight thousand renminbi, the Chinese yen. It's about uh, one thousand, uh, more than one thousand average uh, US but you know someone charge um, the top artist will charge like uh, 50,000 renminbi or yeah so it's a uh, and the lowest maybe 100 or 200 so I, I, I certainly belongs to the lowest uh, rank, but I believe my artistry is not the lowest. Okay, so you get a good uh, sense of uh, uh, what you're paying for. Of course, you can get uh, cheaper ones online with a computer-generated sale. Um, yeah, you, if you have artistic eye, you can tell the difference between my design and uh, the other cheap uh, website. You know, it, it's not just the the content. You know, you put to something readable. It has to be. It have to do with the whole de concept. You know, um, to match the mental image of this. Uh, the content, the style has to match that. Yeah, it's moon, moon, uh, mirror, moon mirror. So I, I kind of make it as smooth, uh, very, just like uh, we did to the the cloud and the moon in the sky yesterday. A landscape painting is a small painting. It's the moon hanging in the in the sky. So that's. Uh, how serious this art is. Just make a metaphor, it's like a classical music in Western art. The very few people could reach the realm of uh, seal engraving art because it has everything from calligraphy to painting and the design, um, sculpture, everything in fine art. That's why it's, it's uh, made itself an uh, integral part of the uh, Eastern art format. You know, the four elements, calligraphy, painting, poetry, and uh, seal. It's all part of uh, the visual art. Okay. You can see if I if I press more the 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 uh, stroke will will be narrower na narrower. Well, so each print could be different.
ask you what's it carved on? It's, it's called the soapstone. It's a rock. Okay, um, I think I'm satisfied. Just one last touch. This ending stroke could be a little bit heavier. If this is the, uh, the name, it could be a wood seal or name seal, I think. You could put uh, on, on the side of the stri uh, like a signature, you uh, and then put the seal next to it or under it. There's no such thing like a perfect. Um, it's always, uh, you know, what we call this imperfect, imperfect beauty. So this art is uh, by nature imper imperfect kind of art. So you need to just look at it as a whole, not just stare at one stroke or something. Look at the whole picture. another moon related to uh, a seal I made for Zen Buddhist uh, institution for the graduate uh, moonshine moon uh, moonlight moon sh moon, uh, shading moon or something okay. I did this one the other day I didn't record it because uh, this is not my design. It's a uh, uh, camel. Camel, right? Camel is a is a, like a family seal or a clan seal. Um, in Japan, it's a unique uh, design of each family. And I carved it. Very tiny. It's like. 
the uh, orchid or something. Flower. Okay. There we go. The moon mirror. You don't like a bam, like uh, like a chop, you know. You, you want to stand like a, very carefully. Okay, that's perfect. That's perfect. And let's make a custom copy and. Uh, index card a little bit moisture the warm temperature will uh, melt the oil based ink in it, especially in the winter. We, this one, because we don't have really cold weather, if it's too hard, you can put it in sunshine to warm it up. It will become softer. If it's too soft, you can put it in the refrigerator to make it uh, harder. Okay. The round seal is kind of difficult to align. The gravity is kind of. This is a little e uh, easier than the, the totally round, you know, to align a round seal. So usually we carve round seal from a square, so it's easier to align. That's better. After stamping, you use a uh, soft tissue, uh, not paper towel, to be rough. But, uh, you know, just uh, you can wash it with this gentle soap. Um, just or like a dishwasher and a, and a toothbrush to clean the residuals uh, from time to time, but not every time. Just you can use uh, rice paper, the painting paper to wipe it out. Okay. That's good. So you can see each print is a little different. This one is more solid. It's narrower and a little bit. It's about the same. It's I can tell a little bit difference maybe. That's just me. Okay. I need to carve the signature which has a rule. As an indicator of uh, orientation, um, it's always on the left side of the seal. So this is the left side. So I carve it here, so you know the the orientation. Carve my name, the engraver's uh, signature.
I usually uh, write on the bottom. So when you erase it, uh, that means it's not my work anymore. <laughs> you can still use the stone for some other purpose. <coughs> usually, I yeah, that's why they uh, they write right above the edge, the bottom edge, not on the top, because you know. Yeah, just some cut old customer of this uh, field. Um, actually, I I have a question: Why I keep all the seals in one book? I have ten books actually. Uh, just let you know, uh, one reason I keep it is because. Uh, uh, it, it you know the if the seal last this is uh, uh, the second uh, valuable thing to have so a lot of an ancient seals are kept this way I have more than ten books already I got uh, I didn't count but uh, in my ebook I published uh, it has like a 350 or 400 there I, since then I did uh, yeah probably. 200 more, so at least 500. I, 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 I otherwise, I how, how you know how do I know how many seals I, I have carved? So it's a uh, old tradition. This is what we call the the rubbing of a seal. You know, the, you, you can write the inscriptions and uh, you not only uh, just the, the face of the seal. You can also write uh, the uh, inscriptions on the side and you have to put uh, rub it on top of on, on the bottom as a record it's a, itself is an art form do you think so this is book is specially made for this it's called the, the the seal collection book or something like that um, it could be smaller I used to use small ones so one seal per page it's just good to study, you know, just for you to study. You can get a. I don't have book. I don't have time to publish a, a second volume, but I do have a first volume published. That you can get as an ebook. Uh, maybe I just scan this. You know, I I did uh, in the ebook form. I I have to uh, arrange it, arrange it on the in the digital book format and it has link to every engraving video in that book so if you click on the stand you lead you to the YouTube video um, I'll put a link under the description later so you can you can uh, get it for four dollar I think um, yeah that's just a, a record a documentary you know. So you know what's in this uh, from the video. I don't have to write, expand it, and you can see, you can watch the process like you're doing now. Any other questions? Thank you, Victor. <laughs> Good question. And uh, let me just write this. Uh, I should number them. But, uh, usually, we should title it like a book, you know, a collection of someone's uh, seal engraving. Like that. Or you can use the studio name and put your own seal on this book. Let's, uh, I'll just put my my. Studio name. Um, okay, I forgot how to. Oh, I just made a mistake. I'll just put my last name there. That's easy. So Lee, <coughs> my s my last name. And this is how I sign just my first name. And we call 
province Yipu seal book a uh, seal category cat catalog catalog yeah okay it's called catalog or uh, keep book or something like that thank you I'll take some pictures and then uh, show this uh, in the uh, social media Um, yeah, the black usually is the rubbing of this inscription, but in my case, um, the black is the digital version of uh, the final, because I use black to um, transfer the I image. When I send people for previewing, you can see the preview is will be in JPEG in, in red, but that's not a final copy. The as you see on my screen, the lower left corner. That's a digital design. I actually I made uh, three of them. I can show you. Let's see. I can just mm, doesn't come up. Okay, let me just go there. So you you have a chance to review it before I carve it on the stone. So there's no surprise. Okay. And someone asked me, you know, to show the process of design. That's too long. It it I it started from uh, uh, research, so I collected this uh, uh, from ancient uh, dictionary, from you know of ancient books and. Uh, uh, Relics like a uh, stone, re uh, stone, car stone, steles, or uh, even you know on on bronze mirror they uh, have the inscriptions also. Like uh, so, this three design I made uh, was in different uh, from different sources. Uh, for example, this one is in a style of a famous uh, uh, stone stele called the uh, Tianfa Shenzhen Bei. Is a uh, uh, Emperor's uh, um, ritual ceremonial uh, record of uh, some uh, special omen uh, in the Three Kingdoms period in late Han between uh, Han and the Tai Dynasty this union period in the, in the Three Kingdoms this union period in medieval China that 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 was my Field. I I'm a specialist in three kingdoms archaeology and history. When I was in graduate school in China, so this was very familiar to me, and uh, I got this from other. So you can see the sources I use. Uh, here's a dictionary of uh, various uh, variations of uh, the moon. Um, in a dictionary, sailing. So they have this collection of uh, uh, different variations of same character in s because there is no standard uh, font, so to speak, in, in ancient times. Uh, so we the dictionary is available. Collect this collection of uh, it has name of each individual artist. Who uh, f so like this one is similar to the one I use. So you can see the famous one like Qi Bai Shi, Deng Xian Mu, Zhao Zhi Qian. These are all uh, has some in Ming Dynasty Wang Guan. So you can see the source. But you have to find similar styles um, by luck. Or sometimes you can adapt to this uh, kind of the style, to the shape of the stone. That's the stone. You know, I took a picture of the stone and then I use Photoshop to to do the design based on this kind of uh, resource. Yeah. Okay. So it takes longest time in this process to design, starting with the research and then uh, design. The carving may take a couple hours, I could be less, uh, depends on the 
complexity of the style and, and the uh, size of the song. Not necessarily larger, the difficult, the smaller it could be difficult too. So um, I cannot show the design before I take your order because it takes most of my brain and time. Most creative part of that is the design. And I do make uh, more than one design, you know, just to because I like it. Uh, sometimes just the one because uh, limitation of uh, um, the format or the resources. Um, but you know, I can also show you different uh, carving styles. In this one, I will only, only show uh, the what we call this. Uh, oops. In in carving or uh, negative carving, if you reverse it, the, the character will be white. Uh, imagine if you if you put seal on the clay or wax, that's what they use. So most of the ancient seals, the bronze seals, are in in uh, in, in um, this uh, this uh, negative carving because the the seal is used as a uh, wax seal <laughs> on on the bamboo book or letters uh, or documents uh, or, uh, or clay, you know, soft soft clay. Uh, we have archaeological discoveries, so some pieces of the seal, this clay seal or wax seal is discovered. Uh, we, di we have also something like a lacquer seal. Uh, so they make a rubbing out of those then you become positive. So the same design could be shown as a uh, feng mi, or the, you know, clay seal, or as an um, impression on the paper or silk. So yeah, that's a, just let you know, so it, we can reverse it in the, on the computer e easily. But for this purpose, I want to keep the shape, the, the round shape as a mirror. So if you use only the line design and make it uh, like a white background, red strokes, it doesn't have that this kind of feel like a mirror. Negative carving is best. So I, yeah, the art, the artist who the, my client, uh, and certainly understood this, and she likes all three designs, she, and she took a few days, carry it around, and then think about it, and then. Um, I think she made a good decision because this one does not really uh, has the same kind of chi and round movement. It's more squarish kind of um, with this shape. It could be uh, basically it's a it's a uh, it, it it's it's carved like a long um, document. Uh, I think this one is better, yeah, to be more pictographic, but it has the kind of little animation in it, <laughs> like little figures, more, more active. But this one's quieter, certainly more s uh, s scholarly or literary kind of, um, it's called a s small seal script, you can check dictionary. There, there are great seal script, or older seal script on bronze. Uh, this is more Han style. The first dictionary called Shuo Wen Jie Zi, the Han dynasty uh, explanations of uh, or like uh, anthologic anthological dictionary of uh, Chinese characters. It's called Shuo Wen Jie Zi. That's what it is. It is like. It's the first um, kind of written language used to unify China by the first emperor of Qing Dynasty, not the last dynasty Qing, but Qing uh, is pronounced about the same, different characters. The Qing, the first emperor of China, two two twenty B.C. 
used this small seal script to unify uh, all the states. Uh, they have different, slightly different uh, styles of uh, scripts. And this was the official script used um, in the Qing Dynasty. And this one is close to the Han official script, the cler clerical script of Han Dynasty. You can see this kind of uh, wave kind of stroke. That's a, um, a middle middle stage between uh, the seal script and uh, the standard script, the print that we see today is uh, squareized and uh, we call it standard script. But we don't use standard script to carve because it's too difficult like this. You know, it's close to that, but uh, a little bit uh, still has the re remnants of uh, the seal script. You know, this is relatively even stroke. The, the standard script has more uh, narrow and uh, uh, wide variations in the stroke. This is the Han official script in the seal. It's basically the same as the Qing dynasty. And we call it uh, meal, meal, uh, meal dry. Uh, in, Chi in Japanese, called uh, Tenshu. Tenshu. Yeah, this is a moon in the oracle bone style. Oracle bone style. You see how much work I've done just for this seal, right? I I study. Uh, you know, you can, yeah, that's the one I adopt. The small seal script, and uh, this is, is the steely I mentioned. And uh, this one is the only one I s I found with this round shape. But the uh, problem is nobody can read this full moon form as the moon because that's the only isolated case. In I, uh, even you know, for me, it's the first time I I I, I see this character in in this form, uh, round moon, and I have some. Uh, characters, I mean, seals from ancient times I borrowed. So I adopt, I also use those um, as a reference. Anyway, that's how, how I work. It's a very scholarly process, so I, um, I don't share with you every time. Thanks for watching, and uh, till next time, bye bye. Okay, um, I'm back just to to uh, an answer this question. You, uh, the, the question from Vector is uh, whether the different script has to do with the uh, regions. Yes, uh, before the unification of China in 220 BC, there are regional differences by state, like Chu uh, in the south and uh, uh, Jing in the north or um, other uh, States in the in the east. Um, after that, relatively is unified. So the the first thing the the emperor, imperial China um, did was to unify the width of the highways, so the you know the cart can can go uh, from here to there, and the unified uh, currency, the unified writing system, so everybody can read it. And unified uh, um, ruler units and the measurement, you know, weight units, du liang the uh, yeah, all the measurement uh, standardized. So unified country is really good for the economy and uh, culture. Uh, there are differences by from uh, artist to artist, but uh, we speak the same language, written language, dialect. Just like dialect, you know, like the Cantonese, I speak uh, a, a local dialect too. But uh, when we write, uh, it's the same. Grammar is the same. Uh, sometimes vocabulary could be different. So the writing system is the same after unification. But, you know, there's still regional differences, but the minor is not uh, uh, something will you have to learn like foreign language, right? So it's all Chinese. Um, basically. Okay.
hope you enjoyed this video and talk to you later next time please subscribe so I will go go um, online you'll get the notice if when I got live broadcast